When I look at this creature, it reminds me of this one. What is this one? Well, that'll become clear in a moment. The secret of a good talk. First, tell the people what you want to tell them. Then tell them. Then tell them what you told them. My talk this morning is going to be about Dubai. If you want to go to Dubai from England, there it is. If you take an airline from Heathrow, for example, it'll take seven and a half hours to get to Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. What's the area of Dubai? Well, here's Dubai. Once again, looking like a, a dragon. There's Dubai. This whole dragon is the United Arab Emirates. That's more like it. Now that's a map of the Isle of Wight. 147 square miles. So Dubai, what is the history? In 1820, when Britain ruled the waves, Dubai signed a treaty with the British to keep an eye on them. In 1892, Dubai became a British protectorate. And then in 1971, Dubai plus six others formed the United Arab Emirates. Here it is way back in the 50s. Population in 1950, 20,000. Population 2019, nearly 3 million. It was a trading company way back. Also fishing, pearl diving, a quiet simple way of life. Look at this camel. Now if you look at his feet, they're ideal for walking on sand. Think of that in a moment. Shops pretty basic but stocked everything. What's Dubai like now? Fourteen lane highway, two feeder roads on that side and that side, so eighteen lanes in all. Automatic road tax charging, so when you drive on it you're automatically charged. Overhead railway with driverless trains. Luxury hotels, skyscrapers, shops, restaurants, and so much more. Entertainment. Small town United Kingdom, it isn't. Nor London, neither. Parts of Dubai are still like this, although they're slowly being used up. One of the things that the Dubaians like to do is to ride their cars in the desert. Of course, if you do this, you need to take some air out of your tyres. So if your tyre pressure is 38, 40, then turn it down, take it down to 12 
then you can sit on the sand and dash around. Of course, if you get stuck, then you'll need another vehicle. So that's the second tip. Take a second vehicle with you always when you're going driving in the desert. There are no wild camels in Dubai. So if you see one in the desert, it belongs to somebody. The desert is used basically for three things. Tourist camel journeys, drives in cars, and drives on four-wheel motorbikes. A great deal of fun. So then, <clears throat> why did Dubai change from this old fishing village to a dynamic state? They discovered oil. But oil starts running out almost immediately. They had it for 25 years, 1966 to 1991. It was gushing out, but then it started to slow down. Ha! An idea occurred to them. Well, I think lots of ideas, but one of the first ideas was, was to get more fresh water. This is a desalination plant, and there are going to be three of them in Dubai by 2024, giving you 120 million gallons of fresh water a day. A day. The second brilliant idea they had was to make Dubai a hub. In their heyday, some holiday towns in the United Kingdom could get 250,000 people per day. To bring in people and trade, what do you need? Money, oil. Well, they've already discovered this. Sun and sand. They've got tons of sand and lots of sun. And they need people. How do you get people? You need hotels, restaurants, entertainments, travel features, trains, planes. When you look at Dubai, the first thing you realise is that it only rains five days a year. In some cities in England, they get four inches of rain a month. The temperature in January, February and March in the United Kingdom is generally about seven degrees. Let's have a look at the sun in Dubai. January, February, March then it gets warmer. But all the year round it has plenty of sun. What about rain? This is in millimetres. 11, 36, 22, 8, 1, none, 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 none. This is a sort of holiday that people want. They want it warm or hot and they want it dry. You need hotels for people, and this is what they've done. Here's one of them, the Atlantis Palm. Look at what a fabulous hotel. Here's another one, the world-famous Burj Al Arab, the only seven-star hotel in the world. If they send a, a car for you, 
it'll be a Rolls Royce. Here's an example of a sweet they'll give for you. What about shopping in Dubai? This is one of the malls. Look at this. Absolutely brilliant. Of course, you can go across the souk to the souk. Now, this is the river that you saw in, in the painting. It the, opens out into the sea. If you get on one of these boats, you can go across to the old town. Where shops look like this. Where things are available, jewellery, sandals, all manner of shopping. What about entertainment? Well, of course, there's the Dubai Tennis Tournament. For the family, you've got water entertainment, water, water parks. There's the Palm Hotel way back. Look at the beaches. One this side, one this side, sailing, boating. Ice skating. I'm sure we saw this before with a... A green base down here so they changed it from a football park to a, a skating park. Here's the Dubai Eye. It's not quite finished yet. When it's finished it's going to have 48 double glazed capsules and be able to hold 1,400 people at a time. This is the tallest eye in the world. It's 663 feet. One man says to another man, is that the tallest building in the world? The second man says, which one? At the foot of the tallest building in the world, you'll see this. There's plenty of spectacular things in Dubai. You could be walking under an aquarium with all these fabulous fish in you could be going to a safari park. This is the Dubai safari park where they they aim to make their their safari park one of the top ten in the world. Spectacular. Just spectacular things that you'll see in Dubai. This looks like a firework display. The Museum of the Future. Contradiction in terms, but there you are. This is the largest, tallest man-made tree in the world. You can go in there and see all manner of things inside, climb up towards the top. Or if you're, you want adventurous adventures, Look at this. The Palm Island. Here's the Palm Hotel again. The beaches. If you want a house on the Palm Island, a million pounds sterling should get you one. You should remember that in Dubai it gets dark at around seven or eight in the evening. Of course it gets light earlier than that, eight in the morning. Entertainment. Here's the largest screen in the Middle East. If you want to go to the cinema, there are cinema complexes inside the various malls. This one has 22 screens. There are various things that are strange in Dubai. Here's one. 
Would you expect a ski slope in Dubai? Well, one, two, practice slope. From the outside, it looks like that. But nevertheless, there is a fabulous ski slope in Dubai. Beaches. There are free beaches, sometimes windy beaches, or you can go to various clubs. Look at this. Here's the Burj Al Arab again. This is on the beach in front of it, or beside it. You can cycle down here, park cars here, walk or run or train down here, go to the beach down here. They're building another hotel here, but it'll be a few years, I would think. What are the roads like in Dubai? Well, generally the roads are dual carriageways with feeder roads. Petrol is very cheap in Dubai. What about houses? Well, there are some fabulous houses around. This one is four and a half million pound. Show me that one again. Four and a half, half million, 21 dirham, 21 million dirham this was. What about other entertainment? Wrestling. Horse racing. Camel racing. What was the fourth one there? Car racing. Finally, I'm going to talk about things you should not do in Dubai. Generally break the law. Don't do drugs. Don't hold hands in public. Don't stare at or take photographs of people in public. Don't dress inappropriately. What else? Don't eat or drink publicly during Ramadan. Don't stare at women folks. Don't swear or make insolent gestures. Don't disrespect rulers. Generally get permission to take photographs and don't smoke unless you're in a designated place. OK, tell them what you're going to tell them. No, tell them what you've told them. I told you where Dubai is in the world, why it is, what's good about it, what's not so good about it. The end.